Ilya Kuryakin in Our Man From U.N.C.L.E. is a, he's just a classic KGB spy. He grew up in the system, grew up in the Soviet Union, uh, was, you know, uh, his, his lifelong goal has always been to be an operative for the KGB, and now he has it, and he has risen through the ranks, and he's become sort of their top operative. He's very by the books, he's very much a calculating, cold spy. Well, my great pleasure to bring back, welcome back, I should say, David Zrinsky from the Bond Experience. How are you doing today, David? I'm doing great, Pete. How are you doing? Real good. Thanks, Power. Looking good as well. Firstly, though, I've just flagged a couple of paintings in the background. I'm not sure they were there last time. So this one's been there. This one was uh, done by uh, an artist um, from Korea that actually did a, a really cool painting of, of me in one <laughs> of the Tom Ford suits. So... Nice. Not too obnoxious. Nice, liking it. Well, David, um, again, I've reached out to you as I often do when we have films that are on the horizon. This one, The Man from Uncle, that we're doing the 2015 version. And uh, you pinged a message straight back saying, I got some bits. And I was like, oh, <laughs> fantastic. So you're actually wearing some of the pieces now. Perhaps you can walk us through them. Yeah, absolutely. So um, you know the designer she basically had a, a, a little bit of carte blanche to really find different things. And this takes place, the film takes place in 1962, 1963. What I liked that she did was she could have gone back and A, created a lot of the things, or B, even shopped around in vintage stores. But she actually used items that were found today, but that had that 1963 type look. And obviously Ilya um, is so... He's dressed so differently than, um, obviously, Henry Napoleon Solo's character, uh, in the sense that Napoleon Solo has these really nice suits. I'm sure you're going to be talking about them. Um, my focus today is Ilya, because she used a, um, a very interesting film called Breathless as an example of the different style, but ultimately Steve McQueen. So, for example, right now I'm wearing a John Smedley it's indigo blue. You could still buy it today. Merino wool, roll neck. It is a roll neck. It's not a mock. And that is very Steve McQueen. It's very bullet, as you can imagine. So you could see the homage there that she created. John Smedley's a great UK brand. Um, it is warm out, but I'm comfortable because it's merino wool. People think wool, oh, it's going to make you sweat. It doesn't. It breathes even better than cotton. So right now I'm wearing the John Smedley in indigo blue, and that's what she chose for the roll neck. And you, it's really nice because even when Ilya takes off his jacket, you see the, the harness that he has for his gun. And it's almost exactly the same harness as Steve McQueen wears in Bullet. All right. You'll see, okay. you do it side by side. And I know I'm not full standing right now, but I've sent Pete you pictures that you can put what this outfit looks side by side. Interestingly, you see my little flat cap here. So the flat cap, a lot of people thought it was Lock and Co. It's not. She actually had it custom made. Ah. Uh, she used, yeah, she used a UK wool. Um, it is, um, and I wrote this down because it's very interesting. And, and this is nearly an exact copy. Right. Okay. So it's black on brown gun club check. It's called a gun club check with a red over check. You can see kind of the red over check in there. And there's different types of flat caps. So you've got this one, which has a little bit of an extension and can unbutton. You didn't think I was going to go into this much detail. Yet. I know. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Damn crazy person. You've got this one that has kind of a, a peaky blinder type of a little more slim line. And this is a Stetson. And then you've got this one, which has got the pop and fresh dough, one that almost comes beyond the peak. So this one is a midline one. This falls somewhere into the middle and you can kind of create all types of interesting profiles, which he does in the movie. And again, it's to give him a look that is more, one word she used, the designer, utilitarian, Spartan-like. You know, he's rough and tumble. He's a tool. Ilya is a machine. Whereas Henry Cavill is basically, you know, he, he's, he's the model. Yeah. You know, he's the haberdashery guy. Now, everybody was talking about this. I'll stand up for a second. Nice. This is beautiful. This is a Ralph Lauren polo suede. Uh, they call it actually a, um, a newsboy jacket. And Ralph Lauren called it a Wilsted suede newsboy jacket. So it's brown. 
It's got these rounded, uh, nice collars that do have and harken back to the 60s, kind of the 60s meets the 70s. It's a very mod look, M-O-D. And that's again, what obviously the designer went for. She picked this out. It's got a nice throat latch. It's got three pockets, including this zipper pocket here. Again, Pete, I've sent you lots of pictures. Yeah, thank um, you. It's got the knit trim on the bottom as well as the sleeve. So it's, people call it a bomber. It is not a bomber. It's a blousen. Ooh. Because it blouses out. Now I'm wearing a size small. It's pretty fitted to me. I could have taken a medium. Um, Arnie Hammer is a tall drink of water. Um, <laughs> he is it, it's not super fitted to him, but because he is like eight foot nine, no, he's not eight foot nine, but he's tall. He's probably I'd like six foot three or four or something. He's tall. Um, it, it looks great on him. It's very elongated. He wore some very um, simple, simple kind of gray slacks and a lot of brown leather accessories, brown shoes, brown belts, et cetera, with, with this, which obviously patterned it very well. So this to me was very interesting from a choice standpoint because she opened up the film with him dressed as this and she closed the film with him dressed in this. So it's really like, you know, how much of an evolution did he have? But here's a little surprise, Pete. Oh. A little surprise. <laughs> Game on. The very first sunglasses that he wears in the film were these. These ah. are the Steve McQueen folding sunglasses that you also see in the Thomas Crown Affair. And I know you just did a piece on these. And these are, these are the correct personal ones. So these fold out like this. They're the correct tortoise shell ah. and like a Havana base, which is a, a nice kind of caramely. Listen to me. I sound like Jay Peterman. It's a caramely <laughs> based. It's, it's a, a coffee a... taste. <laughs> getting, but it, getting vanilla notes. <laughs> getting vanilla notes. With a, it's, it's impotent, but subtle. Um, but what I like about these is it does have kind of those blue lenses, but it's got that very mod yeah. classic look now. And the purcells were perfect. He wound up actually wearing uh, uh, Armani aviators in a gradient amber after these. But what's interesting about that is 1963 film, right? Takes place in 1963. Armani wasn't invented until 1975. <laughs> there you go. L little details for your fans out there. So yeah, this was pretty much the look of Ilya as it puts together. And she really did borrow heavily which i think was perfect that steve mcqueen aesthetic including the sunglasses that's terrific oh mate that's fantastic you must have been sitting under the breakfast table this morning when i discussed this with anastasia because i was even taking screenshots of um Ilya wearing these purcells and i actually spoke to someone from purcell today as well and zapped them through i said surely this is the right ones and it's it's so Steve McQueen. He's even wearing some of the Barracudas. I think he even wears the navy and the stones That's like halfway through. Correct. So it's kind of uh, unavoidable, really, to make those comparisons. Yeah, you know, you've got fans and you've got uh, dissenters of the film. I'm a, I'm a huge fan. I like the humor. Um, I didn't really watch the series that much, so maybe that's why I did enjoy it as a standalone. But I think people, you can't really argue that as a fashion template, it's perfect i mean it's got these really i call them style instead of fashion like a barracuda jacket will never go out of style you buy one today you can gift it down as an heirloom piece for many generations and they put them in that they put them in those harringtons which is perfect and a little bit more accessible than the tom ford one that uh that bond wears yeah no i that well that they all look really cool and i love the the jacket was just i think she i saw an article in the la times that she saw this jacket while styling Henry Cavill whilst he was getting fitted so she bought that jacket and Ralph Lauren then sent her millions of duplicates whilst they were back in London so is that one that you're wearing was that from an auction or is this something that you went to Ralph Lauren and, and managed to acquire so as soon as it came out before the detectives really started to go on it um, I found this jacket there were still sizes all the sizes were left because nobody had really identified it and um, and basically, I nabbed it um, very quickly. They disappeared. I will tell you, they do come up on list, L-Y-S-T, which is the right. search engine for fashion. Every now and then, you can find one in different sizes. But it, 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 they are harder and harder to get. By far, one of the most, I mean, you know, I'm touching myself, folks. This is not for kids. <laughs> um, one of the softest combed, suede 
coats, jackets, and I own too many, as Danielle says, that I own. It's just beautiful. Yeah. And it's interesting you say how it kind of bookends the film with that at the beginning and at the end. And I think, I don't know if it's deliberate, but obviously rather than tell the audience that the character's been on a journey, I think the costumes designers are just saying, look, this is his signature look and he's not, yeah. you know, you can't get him out of this. So. Well, that's, that's a great, great point. Cause what my takeaway was is that he's such, um, he's such a stalwart, you know, he's such a by the book guy that, you know what, even though he went through this journey and this story, he didn't really change that much. Yeah. You know, he yeah. won't change. He's still that hard hitting tool. <laughs> yeah, I love that as well. And Henry Cavill, as, I mean, you and I sometimes hit forks in the road with Henry Cavill. Oh. But I do love, in terms of like, should he be Bond? You know, oh. is he going to be, would he make a good Bond? And maybe I might have to give you a couple of inches in the, in the ground here because when I watched this film, I think the first hour of it, I was watching it through the prism of can this guy be Bond? And it removed me from enjoying his performance as Napoleon Solo. And it also kind of removed me from enjoying the film as well. But then after about an hour, you kind of get into his quirks and you get into his nature. You know, he's waiting at the safe to be undone. He's got his hands behind his back and he's kind of talking how this big, huge you know, monolithic safe can be undone because of but well, he's doing it in such a gentlemanly way and almost like a parody of himself. And so I then, but then he starts to get a bit harder edged as the film goes on. He gets in the dune buggy and rips across the water and the music then kicks in and you think, actually, this is a really, really cool portrayal of that character. So I don't know. And I, I, you know, who really cares what I think, but I don't really know if he'll fit into the mold of Bond, but maybe I'll throw it to you. Was this film something that really aligned you with Cavill and Bond in terms of how you view him? It did. And by the way, I want to go back to something you just said, because all I asked from you all I've ever asked from you as a friend is to give me a couple of inches. So good, good <laughs> on you for that. But, but more importantly, and, and, and cogent to your question, um, yes, it cemented it. And what I, what I almost imagined to myself is imagine him in his natural British accent playing that role. Kind of a fun, you know, almost like Roger Moore meets Pierce Brosnan has a Daniel Craig baby. So he does, you know, the rough and tumble action. We've seen that in Mission Impossible. You know, he, the guy can throw a punch, he can fight. Yeah. Um, but then marry that to the sensibility of the style, um, the attitude, the walk, you know, watch him walk in The Man from Uncle. Watch him grab that suitcase in a briefcase and see him walk and see him, you know, just even that whole like boat chase explosion when he's eating the lunch mm. and he's finding yes. all those things. Watch that really carefully, the subtle, tiny movements that are very bond like bond doesn't bond doesn't do this he doesn't go oh! like he doesn't do these like <laughs> scooby-doo type you know spit takes and things like that bond is like little little moments where the eyes get steely watch mm. those when you watch yeah. this film and you're like that's